good morning in today's presentation we are going to see about the nutrient media for the plant tissue culture it is a part of the chapter coming under plant tissue culture so in the previous presentations we have seen about what do you mean by plant tissue culture that is the growth of the uh, single cell or a tissue in a nutrient medium by providing the artificial environmental conditions to develop into a whole intact plant or otherwise we can produce the various secondary metabolites whatever we require by using the appropriate precursors so for that we require a medium what do you mean by a medium it is the one which is going to provide all the nutritional requirements to the cell or a tissue to grow and multiply and also to produce the secondary metabolites which is required so what are the different functions of the medium they provide water they provide mineral nutritional needs they provide vitamins they also provide the growth regulators and also they provide the condition which is access to the atmospheric gases and also the gas exchange and apart from that it also helps in removal of plant metabolite waste and if this is the flow chart what are all the sources of energy we are going to provide or get in the medium the very first and major source is the carbon source it is provided from the sucrose maybe it is in, used in the percentage of 2 to 5% or otherwise fructose lactose maltose and starch and then the major uh, source the second one is your nitrogen which can be obtained from the defined sources or undefined sources the defined sources may be of uh, two categories one is major that is the inorganic ions like ammonium and nitrate and minor sources that is amino acids glycine and glutamine the examples of amino acids and the undefined sources which gives nitrogen or the milk of coconut or extracts of malt or yeast or corn extracts and next we go to the composition of the culture media when you say a culture media it should provide all the necessary nutrients so that is why we need to see about the exact composition of the culture media that means what does the media should contain the very first requirement or the, the component what they should have is the inorganic nutrients it includes the macronutrients like nitrogen phosphorus potassium calcium etc and apart from the macronutrients it also requires the micronutrients like boron copper iron manganese zinc etc and next the organic nutrients which includes the vitamins the various vitamins like b1 that is vitamin b complex b1 b6 b3 b5 and also the amino acids like l arginine l aspartame l cysteine hydrochloride l glutamine etc and the carbon source is derived from glucose or maltose and growth hormones like the auxins cytokinins gibberellin citalin and abscisic acid and apart from this the media also requires the substrates like protein hydrolysates or yeast extracts fruit extracts coconut milk and then the important thing solidifying agents like the agar alginate gelatin 
and also it requires the iron sources uh, then the EDTA and antibiotics. So these are all the substances which is required to uh, prepare the culture media and out of that the very important criteria is the pH. Once you make all the uh, when, when once you add all the required components and you make made into a solution and that solution should be checked for its pH where the cell can grow or where the nutrient media can be provided in an optimum pH so that the damage or improper growth should not happen over there. So the pH maintained for the culture growth is 5.626 before autoclaving. And once it is autoclaved, it, is, it should also be checked again for the pH and if there is any variation, it has to be adjusted by using a suitable substances. And here I had listed out or tabulated the different kinds of media with the requirements of the different components, all the organic, inorganic and uh, the other sources, including the minerals, etc. So here you can see the Heller's medium or niche medium, white's medium, Hildebrand medium, Morashik and scoop and Guatharat medium. Okay, the very first media which was uh, isol uh, which was prepared or it is discovered was the Hildebrand media and then followed by Morashik and scoop, then white's media. So you can just go through this uh, uh, tabl tabular column where it requires the components. Okay. So here you can see the various components, what is all it is required. Usually they are required in, on the very less concentrations that we will see later. What is the concentration it is required? And here always they are given in the terms of milligrams and micrograms. So here, first we will see about this uh, inorganic nutrients. These are the uh, mineral elements which play a very important role in the growth of the plant growth and its functions. Essentially, there are about 15 elements which are required for the whole plant growth. This we have seen when we have studied about uh, the plant, the factors affecting the various, uh, that is the various factors affecting the plant growth. Especially when we have seen about the mineral requirements and the fertilizers. So likewise here also there are about 15 elements which is uh, very much important for the plant growth. And under that it is categorized into the macronutrients, micronutrients. The macronutrients are the elements required in the life of a plant little bit more concentration and usually they are required in 0.5 millimoles per liter and the ma macro nutrients includes about the six major elements like nitrogen potassium phosphorus calcium magnesium and sulfur and when you just see about the nitrogen, it is required in 2 to 20 millimoles per liter. It influences the plant growth. And it is essential in uh, plant nucleic acids, that is the formation of DNA, proteins, chlorophyll, amino acids, and also as hormones. And next, when you come to phosphorus, it is required in the amount of 1 to 3 millimole per liter. It is usually present in the large amount in meristematic and fast-growing tissues. It is essential for photosynthesis and respiration. And potassium, it is required in the concentration of 20 to 30 millimoles per liter. It is usually required for the cell division. 
for the growing of meristematic tissues and also it helps in the pathways for carbohydrates, proteins and chlorophyll synthesis. And next is calcium, one to three millimoles per liter that is involved in the formation of cell walls, roots and leaf development. It also participates in translocation of sugars, amino acids and ties up oxalic acid. And magnesium is also required in one to three millimoles per liter. It is involved in the photosynthetic and respiration system and it is uh, active in uptake of phosphate and translocation of phosphate and starches. Sulfur, it is also required in one to three millimoles per liter which is involved in the formation of nodules and chlorophyll synthesis and it is also a structural component. And next we will see about the micronutrients. Usually the elements which are required in little smaller quantities for the normal growth and functions of the plants are called as micronutrients. Usually their concentration required is 0 0.5 millimole per liter. The plant usually thrives on the 17 elements, which is considered to be the micro element, the micronutrients. And uh, usually the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, they are derived from the atmosphere. And the micro elements like boron, copper, iron, manganese, zinc, cobalt, molybdenum, nickel, aluminium, iodine, ferrous, that is the iron compound, reduced form of the iron compound, sodium and chlorine. Without this micronutrients, the, there will not be the healthy growth. If they are deficit in their nutrient media formation, they exhibit deficiency symptoms. So what are the deficiency symptoms due to the decreased quantity of micronutrient in the culture media or pigmentations, absence of resins, that is during the formation, presence of narrow cambial zone, cellular hypertrophy, and symptoms of chlorosis, which is due to the absence of iron and sulfur. And uh, the micronutrients concentrations and their role during the growth and development are that listed as follows. If you take iron, that is the ferrous, it is required in the terms of one micromole per liter. Usually iron involved in the cell division, respiration, chlorophyll synthesis, and photosynthesis and it is provided as uh, iron sodium EDTA or sodium salt of EDTA and next micronutrient is your manganese it is required around 20 to 90 micromoles per liter this is involved in the various functions like cell elongation regulation of enzymes and growth hormones and also it assists in photosynthesis and respiration and next micro micronutrient is your boron that is it is required in terms of 25 to 100 micromoles sorry here it is uh, in the ppt it is wrong uh, a slight change in the position that is 25 to 100 micromole per liter. It is responsible for the cell division and cell elongation. And next copper, it is required in terms of 0 0.1 micromole per liter, molybdenum, five micromole per liter, cobalt, 0.1 micromole per liter, zinc, 1.5 to 30 micromoles per liter, and the other micronutrients which are required in very small amounts are like your iodine, nickel, aluminium, ferrous or chlorine or sodium, etc. 
Okay, so these are the uh, some of the examples of the micronutrients in which concentration they are required and what is their role during the growth and development of the cell in the plant tissue culture. And next is the organic uh, nutrients. The organic nutrients includes the nitrogen substances, that is the sources of nitrogen substance vitamins, amino acids, and substances which produces the carbon source. And apart from that, the growth hormones and regulators. When you just see the nitrogen source, usually I told it is supplied from the inorganic salts like ammonium salts or nitrates. And most of the plant cells, they are capable of uh, synthesizing the essential vitamins, but they cannot be produced in the sufficient amount. So that, that's why it has to be supplemented. To achieve the best growth, always it is good to supplement the tissue culture medium with one or more vitamins and amino acids so that they may not have any deficiency in this uh, organic nutrients so that the improper growth can be prevented. So here we can see the list of vitamins which are essential or which has to be added in the preparation of tissue culture media. The first one is thiamine, that is vitamin B1, which is an essential coenzyme in the citric acid pathway. That is already you have know about this very well. In tissue culture, this uh, thiamine is required in 0.1 to 1 milligram per liter concentration. And next one is the nicotinic acid, that is otherwise called as vitamin B3 or niacin which is required in the concentration of 0 0.5 milligram per liter. And next, the pyridoxin, that is nothing but your vitamin B6, also in 0 0.5 milligram per liter. And calcium pantothenate, that is nothing but your vitamin B5, required in the concentration of 0 0.1 milligram per liter. And all these vitamins, that is B3, B6, and B5, are required to improve the growth of the cells in the tissue culture. The next vitamin is your myoinositol, which is a part of the B complex. In its phosphate form, it is uh, essential and it is present in the cell membranes and organelles. And usually it is not essential for the growth of the plant cells, but it is uh, beneficial in the biosynthetic pathways. And next you have your vitamin B12, that is nothing but your cyanocobalamin and uh, riboflavin, that is vitamin B1. And uh, folic acid, vitamin M in the concentration of 0 0.5 milligram per liter. And biotin, vitamin H, para-aminobenzoic acid and ascorbic acid, that is nothing but your vitamin C. And to alpha tocopherol, nothing but the vitamin E are also used in special cases in the form of their extracts and uh, their exact function is not uh, known but they are required usually for the growth of the cells and the production of secondary metabolites by them in the plant tissue culture. And next the amino acids, what is their role if you see? Usually the Cultured plant cells, they will synthesize the amino acids, but they are not considered essential. And I, as I already mentioned, the common sources of organic nitrogen also can be derived from these amino acids, that is casein hydrolysate, and L-glutamine, L-asparagine, arginine, methionine, and adenine. And uh, this amino acids, it should not be added alone in the plant tissue culture because sometimes it inhibits the cell growth. 
one example we can see over here that is tyrosine. It stimulates the morphogenesis in the cell culture, but it should be used only in the agar medium. And this cell tyrosine, it also stimulates this shoot formation. And uh, the adenine sulfate, again an amino acid, if it is supplemented in the culture medium, it stimulates the cell growth and greatly enhance the shoot formation. And next is the carbon source. The carbohydrates are usually used in the tissue culture media to give the energy source of carbon. The most commonly used carbon source is sucrose in the concentration of 2 to 5 percent, that is 20 to 30 grams per liter. And apart from sucrose, the other carbohydrates used to provide carbon source are glucose and fructose, which gives the good growth. And apart from that, maltose and raffinose also can be used in some of the cases. Usually the dicotyledonous roots grow better with sucrose, whereas the monocotyledon roots will grow with grow well with your dextrose. That is nothing but your glucose. The other carbohydrates used are the mannose, sorbitol, pentoses, sugar alcohols, glycols, hexoses, uronic acids, sometimes the lactose, galactose and also the potato starch, starch grains. Sometimes even the glycosides also can be used as a carbon source in the plant tissue culture media preparations. Under certain experimental conditions, these are all can be used. So that is about the carbon source provided in the plant tissue culture by the use of the different types of our carbohydrates. And next is the growth hormones or the regulators or the modulators. The success of the plant tissue or the cell or organ culture depends upon the amount of plant hormones and other growth substances which are added into the nutrient media. Usually the five important uh, growth hormones like your auxins, ethylene, abscisic acid, cytokinins and gibberellins are usually used in the required concentrations. And uh, these plant hormones, that is apart from these five important plant hormones, the other now recently uh, discovered hormones like your polyamines, jasmonates, salicylates, are also can be used depending on the experimental conditions. Well, that is, the, some of the mediums in some of the uh, exact conditions, they may use this kind of uh, newly discovered plant hormones or the growth factors. Or otherwise, the usually used uh, growth hormones are your auxin, cytokinins, abscisic acid and gibralins. That you know very well. Or uh, usually you would have come across about these five important growth hormones. So you can just see, I have given a, just a flowchart, that is the plant growth regulators, usually the auxins, gibralins and cytokinins for which uh, type of uh, actions it is required in the plant tissue culture media. When you just see your auxins, usually they stimulate the cell elongation. So in that condition, you may use your uh, natural uh, auxins like your indole 3 acetic acid or nephthyl acetic acid or 2,4-D and gibralins usually they produce the elongation of internodes and cytokinins usually they are helping in the cell divisions so usually auxins and uh, cytokinins are most more commonly used in the growth and in some cases if the plant tissue culture method is by the shoot tip culture or the primordial cultures there 
the elongation of internodes are required. And the cytokinins added also may be of natural one or the synthetic ones. So the natural cytokinins used are your adenine or zeatin and synthetic ones like your kinetins or benzyl adenine is used. And here the different uh, growth regulators or hormones, what kind of uh, functions they do when they are incorporated in the tissue culture media. Auxins usually they promote the root growth and the cell divisions. That means they initiate the root growth. Cytokinin Cytokinins promotes shoot growth and cell division. Gibberellins promote cell enlargement and shoot elongation. Abscisic acid, it is otherwise called as the plant stress hormone and inhibits the auxin. Ethylene in low concentration can promote a process or sometimes it inhibits, whereas the higher levels usually they have the opposite actions that it inhibits okay so these are the role of uh, growth hormones in the plant tissue culture media and other media substances are which promotes the growth in the tissue culture are the protein hydrolysis examples that is soya protein hydrolysis or yeast extracts or fruit extract that is especially banana fruit extract then fresh coconut milk or sometimes the pasteurized coconut milk also can be used and also some of the phenolic compounds used are fluoroglucinol which stimulates the rooting of shoot sections and sometimes the activated charcoal is used which is used as a detoxifying agent it detoxifies the waste materials from the plant tissues and the impurities by adsorption. And uh, the concentration usually used is 0.3% or lower than that. So here, how, how does it act as a detoxifier? It adsorbs the secondary products secreted by the culture. And this charcoal, whatever you are using in the tissue culture method, it, had, it has to be processed well and then it is used. That is, first it should be washed well with the acid and then it is neutralized and then it has to be used. So once whatever you are using the charcoal, next time you are not supposed to use it. That is, you are not supposed to re reuse the charcoal. And usually it controls the supply of endogenous growth, uh, uh, sorry, the endogenous growth hormones usually should be supplied. And uh, the water, what you're going to use for the preparation of uh, culture media should be the demineralized water. Double distilled, demineralized water should be used. And next, the solidifying agents, what you're going to use. That is, whenever if you want to use a solid substrate in that condition, what you're going to use or sometimes to increase the thickness of your uh, media, what are the solidifying agents you're going to use it. Usually, the solid media is preferred whenever you want to improve the oxygen supply and uh, support to the culture growth, you have to use the solid media. So the substance with the strong gelling capacity should be used into the liquid media. So already you might be studied or done some experiments in your microbiology, how to prepare the semi-solid nutrient media or the liquid media and the preparations you might be knowing. 
the very commonly used substance is your agar you know very well about agar and apart from agar you can also use alginate or carrageenan these are the carbohydrate substance obtained from the sea weeds and gelatin it is a protein obtained from the animal source and starch you know and sometimes the hydroxy ethyl cellulose or polyacrylamides can also can be used to, to solidify the tissue culture medium so agar is an extraordinary substance which will resist the enzymatic hydrolysis at any incubation temperature and only a few bacteria exist which are capable of producing the degrading enzymes otherwise it is a, a very good solidifying agent where you can use as a solidifying agent in the preparation of your tissue culture media and as we already discussed about the iron source which is uh, produced from sodium or iron edta and ph of the medium should be maintained it should be maintained at 5.5 6 to 6.0 before autoclaving the culture medium and apart from that sometimes antibiotics are also used to prevent the excessive contamination in the culture medium because there is a, a chances for the contamination at any point of the process during the preparation of culture medium so usually to prevent the contamination you have to use the antibiotics usually you may use some of the fungicides or bactericides in the very lower concentrations whatever the concentration you are using that should not be toxic to the explant and uh, the very commonly used antibiotics are carbonicillin it is in the concentration of 500 mg per liter and sometimes augmentin can be used 250 mg per liter okay so that is about the uh, preservatives or the uh, antibiotics which are used to prevent the excessive contamination during the preparation of the culture medium so these are all the various requirements for the preparation of the tissue culture media and how it is prepared uh, so all these uh, according to the table what we have seen that is the morashik and skug media white's media or hildebrand's media so depending on that the exact quantities are weighed and then they are dissolved in the deionized water and that can be sterilized and it is used for the growth of the plant cells or the tissues okay so that is about the media preparation and the requirements of media for the plant tissue culture thank you